Hello everyone, my name is Eric and you're watching Leftist ASMR and today I am doing something a little bit different. First of all, I'm in my roommate's bedroom, so I'm not in my bedroom today because he's visiting his family in New Jersey, so I thought I might as well try it out. Um, and then the second thing is I'm softly sp speaking rather than whispering. So if this is something you like, please put a comment down below. If it's something you don't like, also put a comment down below. And if you're interested in ASMR and you like to get tingles, um, and you also are interested in politics or leftist politics, please subscribe. I'm really trying to grow my channel and it would mean the world to me. So in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is taking a political quiz for leftists that kind of puts you, um, that kind of determines your political ideologies um, on the left, left side of the political spectrum. So I'm really excited. I know before I did um, a different political test called the eight values test and uh, it was really fun to do and a lot of you really liked it and I've gotten some requests to do another similar video so um, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'm going to be throwing in some hand movements with the numbers um, of each question and I'm going to be putting in right over here um, what I see on my computer screen so you can follow along the quiz with me and when you, after the video or during the video what would be really cool is if you took the same quiz and then you can comment down below um, the result that you got and so we can see what we all got and kind of compare the results so without further ado i'm excited to move, kind of begin and start taking the quiz all right so as you can see i have the screen right here and this video is called the left values quiz and i'm going to read just like so kind of what it says it kind of explains what the quiz is so it says left values is a leftist quiz inspired by and based upon the a values quiz which I took earlier on this channel. It seeks to identify your position on the left-wing spectrum. If you're not a leftist, this quiz is obviously not suited for you. You will be presented with a statement and then you will answer with your opinion on the statement from strongly agree to strongly disagree with each answer slightly affecting your scores. The questions for each axis are presented in order rather than scattered. At the end of the quiz, you will answer your answers will be compared to the maximum possible for each value, thus giving you a percentage. And it says answer honestly. There are 72 questions on the test. So super excited, 72 questions. So please watch the whole video. Um, hopefully it's relaxing and you have to wait till the end to get my result. So just press start. The first question, question number one. Reforming capitalist society to achieve better rights for workers is desirable. Yes, I would say that is a desirable thing. Um, so yes. Question number two. Again, it says strongly agree and it goes all the way down to strongly disagree. Question number two says revolution is the best way of achieving a socialist society. So this is a complex question that, you know, I'm unsure about the answer just because Yes, I think revolution is most likely really important, um, and I support revolutionaries, but at the same time, um, revolutionary or revolution can also affect um, the most marginalized people in a, in a bad way, in a, in a poor way, negatively. So it's a complicated because under the current system, marginalized people are living um, a marginalized, oppressed life. During a revolution, they're likely to be most uh, likely to I guess endure the most difficult parts of a revolution, so it's just hard to say. Um, that really long-winded answer is just a long way of saying that I'm unsure. Question number three. The negative consequences of a revolution gener generally outweigh the advantages. See, I just explained it. So in a revolution, it's probably likely that the most marginalized and oppressed people are going to be the most affected um, have the potential to be the most negatively affected by a, re a revolution. So it's kind of hard to say. Um, but I'm going to say I disagree with this. Question number four. Liberal democracy is a viable way of achieving a socialist society. Um, I'm going to say no. I did a whole video, and I'll put it up here in case you're interested in watching, on why I don't call myself a liberal. Liberal really just means that you believe that um, in economic like economic freedom, so like free markets, and um, that the market can kind of control the democracy. So I don't necessarily believe that. So I'm going to say that I 
strongly disagree with this one. Question number five. A socialist revolution is made inevitable by the conditions of capitalism. Um, definitely. You know, that's part one of Karl Marx, um, Communist Manifesto. Question number six. Workplace democracy within capitalism is an acceptable alternative to a complete socialization of the economy. I'm gonna say I'm unsure. I'm gonna no, I'm gonna say I disagree. Question number seven. Revolutionary violence is acceptable as long as the final outcome is positive. So again, a really difficult question. I know people have different beliefs regarding this. Personally, I'm a pacifist. So I don't believe that there should ever be physical harm put on another person. I'm really against violence against people. Um, so that I think this is talking about violence against people. So I'm going to say that I, I, I disagree with them, but I'm very, um, I, I'm very supportive of violence against property. I don't think that property really has any meaning. Um, and that I think that we should definitely be supporting revolution. Um, and even if that revolution is, um, it comes with a destruction of property. So I think I'll say I disagree, but not strongly because I do agree with violence against property. Question number eight. Redistributing wealth away from the wealthy through taxes is a viable way of, def of defeating inequality. I think it's a necessary step, but I don't think it's going to be the end all be all. So I'm gonna say that I am neutral um, for this one. Question number nine. Modern social democracy is a betrayal of left-wing values. Definitely. I talk about this again in that, the video I made about liberalism. I think social democracy has definitely a betrayal of, like, um, uh, you know, distribution of wealth, redistribution of wealth and equity. So I'm going to put agree. Question number 10. Question number 10. I can't go a whole video without whispering. Um, question number 10. Oppressed peoples have the right to engage in a violent uprising when all other options have been exhausted. Um, definitely, I think oppressed people kind of have the reins to decide what they want to do and how they want to run their revolution, so I would say I strongly agree. Question number 11. The means of production such as factories and farms must be publicly owned. Strongly agree. Question number 12. I don't know how to keep doing all the hand things, so like one, two, I guess. Um, material conditions and needs are the dominant drive behind socioeconomic changes. Material conditions and needs are the dominant drive behind socioeconomic changes. Conditions and needs. I'm, I'm unsure what that means, so I'm going to put unsure. 13. Socialism can only be fully achieved in developed industrial societies. No, I definitely disagree with that. Strongly disagree. Question number 14. From each, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs is a good principle. From each according to his ability to each according to his needs. Strongly agree. This was on the last quiz, the, um, the eight core values quiz, whatever it was called. The eight values quiz. So, and I put strongly agree then. Question number 15. It is possible to peacefully convince the ruling class to conform to a socialist society. I'm going to say no, unfortunately not. Strongly disagree. No justice, no peace. They don't say that for no reason. Question number 16. So I guess this is like 6 plus 10, 16. Capitalism will induce its own demise through contradictions that will result in crisis. Strongly agree. I think we're already seeing that. I think we've been seeing that for the past hundreds of years, since 1970-something. 1976 since the United States became a country and I think we're seeing it right now again with the pandemic I think we see it every year all the time um, question number 17 so we got 7 plus 10 17 class conflict class conflict is a force that has influenced much of human history I strongly agree not just in the United States but all around the world question number 18 so you got your Got your eight plus ten. The establishment of socialism is a gradual process rather than an instant rapid one. The establishment. Um, I'm gonna say I disagree with this. Question number nineteen. So you got your nine and your ten. So 
Society is chiefly driven by individuals and ideas. Society is chiefly driven by individuals and ideas. I don't know. I guess unsure. Society, I'm sure I'm unsure. Question number 20. Total economic and social equality is realistically possible to achieve. I think it is realistically possible. I agree. I'm going to put agree instead of strongly agree because I just don't know how. Um, I'm, you know, but I think I believe in it. I'm hopeful. Question number 21. And an economy is generally designed better when it is organized bottom up rather than top down. Strongly agree. Yes. Question number 22. 22. 22. Local planners, rather than national planners, are more efficient at running a planned economy. I would say I agree. Question number 23. Two, three. A centrally planned economy based around computers is a concept worth investigating. A centrally planned economy based around computers is a concept. I'm going to say I disagree. I don't think we should be planning an economy based around computers, but that's just off the top of my head. Question number, question number 24. In underdeveloped societies, a centrally planned economy is the best way to make rapid progress. In underdeveloped societies, a centrally planned economy is the best way to make rapid progress. No, I disagree. Question number 25. Two, five. Principles of workplace democracy and self-management are desirable. The principles of workplace democracy and self-management are desirable. I'm unsure what that means, so I'm going to put unsure. Some of these are a little bit complicated, maybe a little bit over my head. I'm not a political theorist, um, but I do. Um, obviously, I'm interested in these topics, so I know a lot of it, but I'm not a genius, um, nor did I study this. Um, not that you have to study something to understand it. I think that's like pretty elitist to say, but um, I just personally don't understand everything. I think that's fair for me to, to say. Question number 20, uh, six, 26. The state can be best defined as a monopoly on violence and oppression. Strongly agree. At least the states that I live in. I can't really speak to all states. I don't live in all of them. I'm going to go ahead and assume yes, but um, for sure the United States. Question number 27. A highly centralized plant economy is not socialism, but rather state capitalism. Mm, I think I agree with that. I think I agree. <laughs> Question number 28. Bureaucracy and inefficiency are always inherent in centrally planned economies. Bureaucracy and efficiency. Yes, I agree with this. Think about the government. The U.S. government is so big. There are so many players um, that are running federally, but the United States is a whole country, um, that it takes so long for us to make any like real progress, and you see that every single day. Okay, question number 29. Um, 29. It is necessary to establish a dictatorship of the proletariat as a transitionary stage between capitalism and socialism. I'm going to say I strongly disagree. I don't think we ever really need to impart a dictatorship on anyone. Or if that is the case, then I don't think it should be. Question number 30. 3, 0, 30. The government should be capable of assigning individuals to workplaces. See, this is actually a hard one. Um, I'm actually unsure. I'm going to say this. I can see how this would become very inequitable very quickly. So I'm going to say I'm unsure. Question number 31. World Socialist Republic is a realistic and desirable goal. See, that's interesting. I'm actually very anti-state. Like, I'm very anti-nationalism. So the idea of not having states, just having a world republic is a good idea to me. Um, but I just, I wonder how that would realistically run itself. So I'm going to say neutral on sure. I'm putting neutral on sure for a lot of these. I think that's okay. Question number 30. Nationalism and patriotism are impulses that are, un are unacceptable in a social society. So I was just explaining this before. Um, I'm pretty anti-nationalism and anti-patriotism, um, so I'm going to say I strongly agree. Question number 33. The 
global socialist movement should be led by a single party or organization. I don't agree. Strongly disagree. Question number 34. Foreign officials have no right to dictate policy in another country. Um, again, this is hard because it's like you think to, you know, genocides that happen abroad and you want someone to intervene, but then you think about how intervening may cause genocide in itself, or the country that is intervening is the genocide, genocidic, genocidal source. So I think I'm going to say, um, agree, that I don't think foreign powers should be um, dictating policy in other countries. Um, also, if you ever heard of something called, um, uh, it's called, um, cultural relativism it kind of just says that like what's okay in one society isn't going to be okay in another so it's hard for like one country to get to decide what's okay for every other country question number 35 it's almost halfway there open borders between like-minded socialist countries is desirable i think open borders in general are desirable so i agree really i just don't think we should have borders um question number 36 any socialist country should be dedicated to exporting their ideology abroad. No, I don't think we should be exporting our ideals abroad. Like I mentioned before, a lot of times that just turns into um, colonialism and genocide. So I'm going to say I disagree. Question number 37. People of similar cultural cultures should unite in federations or confederations. Mm. Yes, I, I think that there are, if you're part of like a marginalized group, like you, you know, you should feel like you have the agency to unite against the oppressive force. So I'm going to say I agree. Question number 38. A lot of these questions, it's like I say I think something and then I think another thing that goes contrary to it, and then another thing that goes contrary to that contrary to that and that and that and it's like it's hard but you know i'm just going with my first gut because there's 72 questions um 38 the international proletariat belongs to no country yes my fake snapping yes question number 39 39 national liberation or self-determination for all peoples is a good concept national liberation self-determination yes question number 40 i would be willing to sacrifice economic resources in my home country in order to help other countries yes strongly agree um and those resources should come from the wealthiest with those resources not just like working class people and poor people question 41 socialist political parties should participate in liberal democratic elections um, socialist parties, yes, of course. Question number 42. Trade unions and workers' councils should form the basis of social society. Yes, I love that. Yes. Question number 43. 43. 43, 43, 43, 43, 43. The leadership of political parties in the progression towards socialism will always lead to authoritarianism. The leadership of political parties and the progression towards mm, I'm unsure. I'm unsure. Question 44. Democratic essentialism is an authoritarian organizational structure that disregards the masses. Yes. Strongly agree. Question number 45. Only a mass workers party can achieve any meaningful long-term goals. Yes, I think I agree. It's hard, you know, it's hard, but yes. Question number 46, 46, 46, 46. Mass spontaneous actions are more effective than carefully planned actions. Hmm, I'm sure, I'm not sure. Like when I think about planned protest, I think that has a place. And then like spontaneous protest also has a place. Question number 47, four, seven. The fact that so many workers vote for bourgeoisie parties 
over socialist parties is proof that party party po politics are no longer relevant. Strongly agree. Honestly, screw both parties, Democrats, Republicans, all of them. Um, I'm done with them. Question, question number 48. Socialist organizations are generally better off when organized loosely and decentrally. I'm going to say I agree. Question number 49. Train, trade unionism has been largely corrupted by the ruling class and is no longer a viable structure for a socialist organization. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. So I'm unsure. Question 55. Zero, 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 zero. Climate change is a major global threat that all socialists must fiercely combat. Strongly agree. Before we're thinking about going to other planets and ruining those, we should seriously consider fixing and saving our own planet. Question number 51. Measures to address environmental issues are unacceptable if they result in significant decreases in production and quality of life. Um, strongly disagree. Question number 52. It is foolish to expect renewable energy sources to be able to replace fossil fuels. Also, I just realized it says like virtual yoga on the book corner of my screen this whole entire time. So funny. Um, I'm not going, obviously. 52. It is foolish to exp expect renewable energy sources to be able to replace fossil fuels. Um, I strongly disagree. Question number 53. Industrialized farming practices must be abolished, even if it leads to lower outputs. I strongly agree. Question number 54. It will be important to implement extensive environmental protections as part of achieving socialism. Strongly agree. So, negative effects of climate change and pollution affect the most oppressed in our societies, um, people of color and poor people, before they're affecting rich white people and middle class people. So it's important that we um, take that into account um, in general, but especially in terms of policy. Question number 55. Experimental environmentally friendly food sources like cultured meat are worth investigating. Sure, I agree. Question 56 of 72. Personal motor vehicles, such as cars, should be replaced with free public transport. Strongly agree. I'm a big cyclist, and I'm so over cars. I, I hate cars. You heard that just now. Like, the timing is beautiful. I hate cars so much. I realize that cars are necessary for some people who are maybe have disabilities and can't walk or get around as easily as able-bodied people. And so in those scenarios, definitely go for it. Have a car. But, um... You know, in general, I'm very anti-car. Question number 57. It is acceptable for humanity to suffer to some notable extent in order to preserve the natural ecosystem. Um, agree. Question number 58. It's like, how are we defining suffering? If, like, suffering, you mean, like, if we get less, then yes. Question number 58. We must radically alter our food consumption in order to limit the exploitation of nature. Strongly agree. Human population growth must be curbed to prevent an ecological disaster. This sounds a lot like eugenics, so strongly disagree. Question number 60 of 72. Six, zero. Some small scale destruction of nature is acceptable if it notably benefits humanity. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know, I'm sure. Question 61. Humanity must return to the primitive ways of the past to overcome long-term climate issues. Sometimes I really think this is true. So I'm going to say I agree. But I don't like the word primitive because it's like, it has a negative connotation that also may be racist. So I don't love the way they word this. But sometimes I'm like, do we have to use less technology in order to... Do we have to use less technology in order to combat climate change? Yeah. Question 62 of 72. We must accept that socialist states of the 20th century failed to seriously address environmental issues. 
I don't know about all the socialist states of the 20th century, I just don't know them. So I'm going to say I'm unsure. Question 63. The oppression of LGBTQ plus people is a major issue that needs to be seriously addressed. As someone who is part of the LGBTQ plus community, I'm going to say I strongly agree. Question 64. Six. Four. Traditional gender norms such as women being homemakers need to be overcome. Strongly agree. Question number 65. Marriage is a patriarchal social construct that should be faced out. You know, this is hard. Um, it's so ingrained in our culture that it's like, why, you know, like not every aspect of marriage is wrong right now, but I think the roots of marriage are obviously homophobic, racist, sexist, classist. So like, I don't know, I'm gonna say it, I'm unsure. Question number 66. I also want to get married one day, just to put that out there. Question number 66. Abortion is an immoral act that should be banned or significantly limited. I strongly disagree. Question number 67. Religions overall have a mostly positive effect and should remain influential in society. I'm like, live your own religion, do you? And I'm very pro-religion and people expressing their religious beliefs and practices. Think that like religion should be covering our laws? Not necessarily, no. But I don't think that's what this is saying, so I'm going to say that I agree. Question number 68. Minority populations should receive special legal protections. Yes. Strongly agree. Question number 69. A socialist government has no right to disrupt religious or cultural traditions in any situation. As long as these cultural traditions aren't, like, violent, then yeah, strongly agree. Question number 70 of 72. Prisons are oppressive and antiquated institutions that need to be abolished. Strongly agree. Prisons, I've talked about this in another video. I'll put another card up here. I think the police need to be abolished and so do prisons. Question number 71. Policies that enable mass immigration are naive and should not be implemented. I strongly disagree. Like I said before, I'm, I don't even think there should be borders in the first place. And the last question, you cannot achieve a socialist society without also making significant social progress. I don't really know what that means. Kind of sad that I don't know what the last question means. Maybe that's symbolic, <laughs> but I don't know, so I'm unsure. Okay, here's what I got. My leftist values results. I'm 67.6% .6 revolutionary and 32.4% reform. That makes sense. I think I've always considered myself more pro revolution than like reform and incremental change. So that makes sense. Um, but I also see at the same time how revolution could negatively impact some um, oppressed groups. So it's like definitely a balance and it's like we have to be really intentional in terms of revolution and like listen to, you know, black people and poor people and um, other B I P O C. Um, but yes, that makes sense. Um, scientific. I'm 60.9% scientific and 39.1% utopian. Interesting. I guess that makes sense. I believe in science. Um, the next one. I'm very decentralized decentralist. Um, that makes sense. I don't think, I think that having a centralized government um, can be oppressive and also really bureaucratic. So that makes sense to me as well. I'm internationalist and that makes sense because I kept saying that I don't believe in borders. So I think that's kind of made me seem internationalist to this quiz, which makes a lot of sense. So none of these were that shocking so far. Okay, I'm unionist. So I'm 36.5% party and 63.5% union. See, I would have expected to be very unionist rather than just unionist. That is actually the most surprising thing so far because I'm very pro-union and very anti-party. Yeah. Okay. I'm very ecological. So I'm 81.9% nature and 18.1% um, production. So this one also makes sense to me. I'm very anti-production in general. I think we need to go with less, produce less, consume less. Um, we have to preserve more, use less. Um, so that makes sense. 
the last one, um, conservative versus progressive. I am 73.5% progressive and 26.5% conservative. Also, I would have assumed that I was going to be very progressive. I think in this one, it means like in terms of social beliefs. And because I'm like, believe that people should be, be able to be religious, um, I think that's probably they're taking that as conservative, which I don't agree with. Um, but then again, I don't really know why it's saying I'm 26.5% um, conservative. Um, I also just want to take this moment to call out why I'm so pro-religion. Um, and I think it's because there's a lot of religions that are oppressed, like, um, you know, Muslim people, Jewish people, um, other religions, Hindu people, um, people who are Sikh. These people are oppressed because of their religion. And I don't think that um, subduing their religious their religion is okay. I think that's really messed up. And so I'm very pro-religion for that reason. So my closest match is echo, anarchism, anarchism. Okay, I love that. I'm eco anarchism, eco anarchist. I'm obsessed. It says eco anarchism or green anarchism is a form of anarchism that places a particular emphasis on environmental issues. It is often linked to more distinct ideological ideologies such as anarcho syndicalism. Eco anarchists are generally revolutionary and support using a decentralized egalitarian economy to achieve environmental goals. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm really close to anarcho communism. That's actually interesting. I got anarcho communism on the eight values test that I took. So that's cool. Um, council communism, eco Marxism, democratic socialism. Wow, these are all really awesome terms that I'm going to read through later and learn more about. Um, but for now, I'm going to wrap up this video because it's, you know, already been about 30 minutes, so I don't um, want to keep this rolling on. Um, but definitely take this quiz and tell me what you got. Um, I'm really interested to know if anyone else got um, the, uh, what did I get? What was it called? Eco-anarchist. Um, I'm really interested to know if any of you got it. So if you got that, comment down below. If you didn't get that, comment down below. Please like this video and please subscribe if you enjoyed it. I hope that this was relaxing, but also really informative and interesting. Again, if you're interested in politics and ASMR and uh, mix up all of them together, and that's who I am. So I'm happy to have you here. Um, have a great day, a great night, or a great afternoon, whenever you're listening, and I'll see you later.